any ecology class uh, is wise to start with some uh, discussion about what ecology is. And uh, usually when I think of ecology um, and it's how it's distinguished from biology, I think about the individual. Um, biology and ecology share a lot in common. They oftentimes are overlapping in ways that make them indistinguishable. Um, but in general, biology is oftentimes focused more on the individual scale, whereas ecology is defined by space, by um, the numbers of individuals or the kinds of interactions among individuals that occur. So let's, let's look at some of those, those, that variation in spatial scale. The lowest level of ecological organization that we talk about is that of the population. The characteristic that defines a population is that it's a single species. There are multiple individuals, as you can see in this example, these flies that are eating some detritus in the lake uh, on the, excuse me, on the shores of Mono Lake. These are all the same species of flies. They, although they're different individuals, they have different genetic characteristics, um, but they can be united under that single, single aspect of species identity. Moving on, let's talk about groups of populations. Once you get to the point where you have more than one species, you start to have, um, I think ecology gets a lot more interesting because we begin to integrate the interactions of multiple species and different kinds of organisms and not just a single species. So here, you know, at communities, that's the definition um, the, uh, that we have multiple populations. And uh, what becomes the complexity of these ecological systems is obviously much quickly, much qu very quickly becomes much more complicated. You have different kinds of organisms. You have understory herbs. You have overstory trees. You've got these wild turkeys running around. Um, you very quickly have a much more complex uh, unit of measurement. One of the characteristics of increasing spatial scale in ecology, I think oftentimes is that the units are sort of implicit and they're familiar in various ways, but they also start to have borders that are less well defined. So when we get to the level of ecosystems, we are oftentimes talking about multiple communities, uh, multiple, not just multiple species, but multiple communities of species that interact together. The boundaries are less well-defined um, often. In this photograph, we have different kinds of forest communities a broadleaf dominated forest as well as a needle leaf dominated forest. And we also have a grassland in the foreground, uh, defined by a lack of woody plants. These ecosystem scale uh, is like, a, as I mentioned, mostly defined by these increasing ecological interactions. And I also kind of want to emphasize here that these systems are open. Landscapes, moving on and moving up. Here we're talking about large areas where all of the, the smaller spatial scales occur and where they are interacting uh, on, across often what are oftentimes dramatic environmental gradients and large areas. So this is a photograph is from the, uh, the summit of Laurel Mountain. That's near Mammoth, California. It's the Mammoth ski area that you kind of see in the center of the photograph. Um, what you're seeing here is a dramatic environmental gradient uh, stretching from the high country in the left-hand side of the photograph down into the lower grasslands, uh, lower elevation grasslands on the right. Uh, these the landscapes are, typ are uh, characterized by multiple populations, multiple communities, multiple ecosystem types and their interactions. There is connection across all these very different kinds of ecosystems. Water flows from the high country down into the low country. The mountains uh, force 
uh, moisture uh, in the atmosphere up and cause it to condense, creating gradients of rainfall as well as temperature. The uh, fires can spread from one of these ecosystems into another. There is the typical ecological interaction here. It's just occurring at a much larger spatial scale. When we get to the largest uh, spatial scale that we can talk about, What's interesting is we end up with a system that is less open than the other um, spatial scales that we've discussed. Uh, in fact, one that has much clearer boundaries than, um, than, we, than the others that we have discussed, and that's that of the globe. The globe has its own ecology, but so far as we know, there are no ecological interactions that extend beyond it. Of course, Thinking about the entirety of the Earth is always appropriate in an ecology class because one of the things that we are setting off to do here, one of the reasons to study ecology, is to understand how the Earth works and to um, learn about it in ways that help us sustain our, our lives, our, our, our livelihood, that of our parents and our children.